you know, butterflies start out as, you know, ugly at, as caterpillars and stuff. Damn. And they start out ugly. Not. <laughs> no. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're just, they're just, just, just a little different. They look, you know. Pokemon. Caterpillar turned into a butterfree. Oh, is it? It's Flutterby. What? <laughs> Welcome to Behind the Lines, the show where we dive deep into the minds and the music of the independent artist. I'm your host, Serene. And I'm Bunny. And today we have with us the wonderful Sam Scott. Hello. (laughs) Hello. What's up? (laughs) So, Sam, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. um, So, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama. I was in the military for about nine years. I've uh, been doing music since I was like probably like eight or nine. Um, yeah, I moved here in 2021. Um, I lived all over before I came here. I uh, came here to finish school uh, and then, you know, just pursue my career in music. Nice. Here I am. <laughs> so what kind of made you want to go towards like an R&B sound? Um, so I grew up uh, listening to R&B. My dad was like huge on like, you know, Anita Baker, um, all of the older generation type of music. Um, I'm a huge fan of like 80s R&B, uh, 90s R&B. Um, but, yeah, like, I think it wasn't until my dad, like, uh, first played Miguel's first album, All I Want Is You. And I heard it, and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I fuck, That's when I first fell in love with Miguel. I was like, I fucking love him. Like, you know, this is my favorite artist. And he's been my favorite artist since, since then. Oh, wow. But, um, yeah, after hearing that, and then finding out that I could sing and, like, write and stuff, I was like, you know, R&B is what I want to do. Uh, when did you, you said you've been doing music since you were, like, eight or nine. Was there, like, a specific moment that you were like, this is what I want to do, like, professionally? This is, like, the career that I want to have? Or was it always like that? Or was it just kind of like, was it? when did it go from hobby to, like? Um, I think it wasn't until, like, high school when I realized that, like, I was good at it, and I was like, okay, I can pursue something here, you know, and it just stuck with me ever since then, Mm -hmm. so, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What about, like, production? Because I know you do Mm -hmm. production as well as songwriting and singing, kind of like the whole gambit. Um, What got you into production? Uh, so my brother actually got me into production. Oh, really? Um, rest in peace, my bro. Love him. Oh. Uh, but he introduced me when I was, like, about 11. And, you know, because I was always interested in, like, uh, making beats in, in school. I was always the one, like, making beats with my mouth or, like, uh, with pencils or being on the I was desk. like, with your mouth? Wait, yeah. are you a beatboxer? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh my god, okay, go ahead. Coming out here. Oh, y'all, casually. I'm like, yeah. No, nope. stop. Right? Like, how do you do this? Yeah, I don't like, understand. <laughs> my parents told me when I was a kid, I used to like make beats with like my nose. Like, it was like. <laughs> Like shit, like that. They was like, "Oh, funny!" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, I did that." <laughs> yeah, I was but like, no. <laughs> yes. They said I, I used to make beats uh, when I was a kid, but yeah, when my brother introduced me, uh, he introduced me to FL Studios, okay. and my dad bought me a my fr- first keyboard for Christmas, and I pretty much just started like learning the whole um, process and stuff. Uh, I would say my first few beats were pretty trash, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but at the time, like, I thought it was a bop, you know. And we would play it in the car with my brother and his friends. Like, my brother is, like, seven years older than me. And, like, so, you know, of course, like, I'm, like, eight. And he's, like, I don't know if it's April 
<laughs> he's like 15 or something <laughs> well i was 11 i mean 11 okay but he was like 18 or something and yeah. um yeah, just seeing them like bopping it, like rapping to it. I was like, oh, yeah, that's me right there. I'm the producer. I made that. <laughs> but yeah, like, uh, that's what I wanted to pursue, like, a producer, uh, producing career. Uh, I, I didn't think anything about singing. So, yeah. really? Yeah. So, what made you make that switch? Uh, when I was 18, I realized that I could sing and I started, like, even before then, I was writing songs. It was more like pop songs and stuff like that. But I didn't like rec uh, write my actual first few recordings until like probably like 17, 18. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember any of them? I do. I One of them actually is uh, going to be on my upcoming project. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was about to be like, oh, you remember it? Sing yeah, it for us I right now. But I don't know if you Can want Can we get a snippet? <laughs> small snippet? A snippet? Yeah, a small snippet. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gotta wait. <laughs> Y'all gotta wait. <laughs> Patience. Patience. I, guess. I don't know if I want to make Oh, yeah. oh. Mm -hmm. 2015, I wrote it, my first EP in 2015, yeah, it was called, I uh, think forever, yeah, uh, but the song that would be on the EP is called July, okay. yeah, and it's about, um, pretty much, it's about my ex in, during that time, but, uh, like, you know, it's high school love and shit, but, I was pretty toxic, okay. <laughs> and the okay, song is pretty much aware. A, a <laughs> the song is about, you know, um, even though, you know, people talking shit about us and, you know, people saying, I'm no good for you or we're no good for each other. Like, fuck what they say. Like, let's just do it, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's whatever, mind your business. you know. Even though I'm toxic. Let them mind their business. It's, it's us against them. Yeah. So yeah. it's pretty much what about. Um, I haven't recorded it yet, but like I'm excited to like record because I revamped it, of course, and like mm -hmm. I redid the beat and uh, some lyrics and stuff. But yeah, I'm excited about uh, recording that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yep. What is your like process like for recording? Like, do you have a home studio? Uh, do you go to a studio? Um, it depends. Uh, I usually always record uh, in my own little space, uh, but. My living situation is kind of like, you know, I'm not able to set up my stuff right now. So um, my um, upcoming single, I record it in a studio. Uh, my friend I went to school with, he also does the mastering for me. Uh, he runs, he's one of the studio managers. And, you know, I was like, bro, like, you know, can I come in? And, you know, it's like, <laughs> of course, I got your session. Uh, so, yeah, I recorded that uh, about in two days. I was the first take um, wasn't fully like up to my standards. <laughs> I was like, I need to go back and like fit some things. So yeah, but um, yeah, usually either in the studio or um, mostly at a home, my home. So there's like a theme that I've kind of noticed about you. Yeah. <laughs> You're laughing because I'm rocking it right now. Butterfly. <laughs> Yes. yes. <laughs> what is the significance of butterflies to you? Um, I actually started. I didn't start loving butterflies until probably like a year ago, mm -hmm. um, and it was just a whole process of getting over an abusive relationship and like wow. trying to find myself again. And um, I looked at butterflies as a symbol of like. You know, you know, butterflies start out as you know, ugly at, as caterpillars and stuff, Dang. and they start out ugly. They look, <laughs> you know, Pokemon. Caterpillar turned into a butterfly. Oh, is it? It's Flutterby. What? Butterfly. Oh my gosh. Yes. 
Yeah. But Caterpie was ugly. So. Caterpie was our ugly. Cater- well, I don't know if caterpillars are ugly. Oh they're, gosh. like, just big. They're ugly. And, like, they're kind of creepy. They're just, like, little crawly I don't creatures. know. Anything with that many legs, but, it's just, like, a little uncomfortable. But, yeah, like, of the things with lots of legs, caterpillars are not there. ugly. No, they don't. Don't they? they? Yeah, they kind of, like, yeah. they slip Caterpie there. doesn't have legs. Yeah. That legs. is not a real <laughs> caterpillar. <laughs> Well, that thing is ugly. I'm sure that caterpillars have legs. I don't think so. Oh think worms God. don't have legs. Yeah, I know. I didn't say worms. I said caterpillars. I know, but they're pretty similar. But that doesn't yeah, mean... Yeah, like... I guess. <laughs> I mean, I think that caterpillars are more closer to, like, centipedes. They have, like, a million legs. Ew. Yeah, don't they? Yeah. No, I don't understand. I so they go to the cocoon yeah. and then they break their legs and start... Well, I mean, they, they just transform. They just transform into... <laughs> Something new. <laughs> okay, well, I don't. I don't know what goes on inside the cocoon, but they come out completely different. But they actually, lose a lot I don't of think legs. Caterpillars are ugly. I just think they're not as nice they're looking as butterflies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but Caterpie is indeed very ugly. Wow. Yeah. What a hater. Yeah. But also, Butterfree is cute. Mm-hmm. So is agreed. He? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the butterfly. Anyway, <laughs> you were saying what. <laughs> For me, so like the uh, like caterpillars turn into butterflies. So like it kind of correlated with my life. Uh, you know, I had an ugly little situation dealing with abusive boyfriend. Like once I was able to get away from him, I started like blossoming. You know, mm-hmm. that's what butterflies do. They blossom into something beautiful, mm-hmm. and that's what I did. I blossomed into this new version of myself that I'm in love with. No, I found uh, was able to find uh, the ability to love myself again. You know, so that's why I love butterflies. Oh. They're so beautiful, even though I barely even see them. <laughs> Do you have a <laughs> like, I see a butterfly. Where are they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a butterfly exhibit, I think. At the yeah, there is. Oh my god, I want to go. I've been you should somewhere. do like a video there. I like. That I would should. Be really cool. That would be dope. I mean, it's not that big. I don't know. I've never been there. I don't know. <laughs> it's not that big. Just a little it's short, cool, little like, real. Yeah. Like, like, real like, yeah. <laughs> but do you have a favorite butterfly? Don't I? I don't know. <laughs> Different types of butterflies. He's like a butterfly. Butterflies a butterfly. Look, butterfly, butterfly. like, I didn't know there was even. Different types of butterflies. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh. I thought you were going to put me off for a second because nah, all I, I know is monarchs. I know. I was like, all I know is monarchs, too. I mean, I know there are others, but that's the only one that I know the yeah, name yeah, of. I, I know yeah. that one, but, like, don't ask me. I, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah. How many butterflies. butterfly tattoos do you have? You have so many tattoos, I, but I know you have butterfly I tattoos. Need, so I need more. <laughs> <laughs> I only have two, so I have... Uh, Right here, <laughs> you're like, wait. <laughs> There's two butterflies right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I need more though. I want a butterfly like right here, the big butterfly. Like, yeah. Like that. That'll probably be my last butterfly. Mm-hmm. You got a butterfly? I one, but I think it's I think it's a moth. Oh, that looks like a moth. Did you say? It doesn't look majestic like a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait. <laughs> Because yeah. this one was just like a, I want to get my hands covered. Let's do something. Just whatever you come up I with, said, throw it on there. Open to your concept. Like butterflies. butterflies. <laughs> okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. Oh my god. <sighs> so happens when you have too many. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Y'all all tatted up. I'm just like... Yeah, we go get a tattoo. I can't imagine I like, myself without tattoos. I was like watching like this... Uh, she's a, She used to be a YouTuber or an artist of some sort. Her name is Damo or something. Mm-hmm. And she's talking about how she like regrets all her tattoos. Because some of the ones that she got was when she was like a lot younger. Mm-hmm. But I'm like... Even like the stupid ones I have that I'm like, this is ugly. Yeah. I'm like, I don't regret them. I'm like, yeah. it was like a season in my life mm-hmm. or like a part of my life. Uh-huh. And like, I just can't imagine myself like not having, not having tattoos. Right. Yeah. Like when I look at old pictures of myself, I'm like, who is that oh, woman? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
why she's so blank? <laughs> right? That's what I was like, why all she got is skin? <laughs> but also, wow, she was so skinny back then. No, she looked good. Period. <laughs> you still look good. What you mean? Like, okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> got a little potato going, but it's okay. It's okay. We can work on it. <laughs> Whatever. You still look good. Yes. You still look good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Potato. I've never heard anyone describe this stuff like that. A stomach as a potato. potato. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know what to say and I was like jelly donut. <laughs> <laughs> the double entendre for me because well. Cambodians own donut shop. So I grew up in a donut shop and I'm like uh. donut. <laughs> donut does sound good, man. That's what I was like, <laughs> it was. <laughs> The donut. She's like, I've been around donuts too much. I don't want to. I hate donuts. With donuts. And y'all better not go to Dunkin' or Krispy Kreme. Y'all better go to a mom and pop. They are Cambodian owned, usually. I mean, I grew up on Krispy Kreme. I, so yeah, Kreme. I was like, I love Krispy Kreme. I ain't Krispy Kreme was our competitor growing up. <laughs> Sorry, girl. I love you some Krispy Kreme. All right. There was like a lot Support of small business. <laughs> don't listen to them. That's no, so disrespectful. <laughs> Support our business. Take down corporations. Look, wow. we had a donut place back at home called Shipley's Donuts. I don't know if you ever heard of. I don't know if they no. have a, a chain. It might be just down south thing, but we are from the south. Yeah, yeah Shipley's. They were good too. Uh, we went uh, there more than uh, Krispy Kremes, so they were a little local shot. I support local businesses. Yeah, I was going to say you said they might have been a um, uh, chain. Yeah. I, they probably, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> look, they, they probably smaller so look, than Krispy Kreme. Don't, don't think too much into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't ask me more. <laughs> That's all I know. <laughs> Surface level. <laughs> You're like, I know that the donuts are good, and that's <laughs> it. Fine. We're going to leave it there. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, dang, now I'm hungry. <laughs> Save. <laughs> Save. <laughs> Save. <laughs> Help but not for donuts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a question. Yes. Do you feel like, you know, being from the South really maybe, like, influenced your sound at all? Being, like, maybe specifically from Birmingham? I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of musicians from Birmingham. Maybe. Um, <laughs> that's re- Well, there were a lot. Most of, like, musicians, like, doing the Motown days. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Alabama mm-hmm. and stuff like that, like... Um, what is, I think, um, I forgot his name, it's not clicking, but one of the, the, the lead singer from The Temptations, I forgot his name, but he was, he's from Alabama, I think, um, but I guess, uh, a lot of soul singers come from the South, Mm -hmm. so I guess it kind of does have an influence. <laughs> I don't know. Like, <laughs> does it or does I've, not? <laughs> I've never looked at it that okay. way, to be honest, you know. Yeah. Um, and, like, I'm a lot, you couldn't even, you wouldn't even tell that I'm from Alabama unless I tell you. A lot of yeah. people tell me that. Yeah. Like, I, was, I grew up so much different than mm-hmm. the people around me, even my siblings. Mm. Like, everyone was like, you do not look like you belong here. Like, everyone always said, you look like you're from the West Coast. Or, like, you know, up north or something. But, mm. yeah, I don't know. So, but I, I've never thought of, like, the South being my influence with my music mm. as much. I what do you see as the influence for your music, then? Uh, my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Honestly, every song I wrote is literally something that I went through. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that and... I don't know. That's... I guess that's mostly all I can say is my life. Yeah, that's yeah. all I write about is something I, that I go through. Mm-hmm. You, know? And, you know, something that other people can relate to. Yeah. But it's my life. <laughs> my life, my life, my life, my life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, you said Miguel is your... Is he still your favorite artist? Yes, 100%. Okay. Have you seen him live? No. 
Bro, so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't rub it in your face. Please. He's so good. <laughs> All I have is YouTube, and I'll just be like. Aren't <laughs> <laughs> you waving like he can see you? <laughs> right. I pretend like I'm at you the concert. You see me? You see me? <laughs> you know, that reminds me of the old AOL of concert commercials. I remember they was like, yeah, they used to do like AOL concerts, like really? like ti- tiny desk. Except this was like even like when I was like before I was even thirteen. This was like maybe when I was like a preteen. They used to have like AOL concerts, and I remember it was this commercial. Where like it looked, uh, it looked like they were at a concert, uh-huh. and then it zoomed out, and it was a computer screen, and then it was these two, like this girl and this guy, or maybe it was two girls, and they were like, I love <laughs> <you>. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> that's understandable. I've been Literally. there. <laughs> yes, but no, I've honestly never been to like a live performance ever. Like, wait, no what? One. No, never. Why? I don't know. It's just like. I was always an introvert as, like, growing up. I was kept to myself. So if it, if I wasn't, like, with, like, mostly in high school, if I wasn't with my boyfriend or, like, you know, with friends or at school, like, I'm at home in my room with the door closed. Same. Making music. <laughs> and my dad used to hate it because, like, everyone would be in the living room. It was like, you're not going to come in here and, like, <laughs> socialize. Or, like, nah, I'm can I have me time? <laughs> I like to be by myself, okay? Yeah. Y'all are kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are me. Everybody's got my nerves. I want to be in my room just chilling. So, yeah, but no, I've so, never been. Mm-hmm. Wait, how does that play a role with you, like, actually performing then? Because if you're, like, I've never been to a concert. I like to be by myself. I want to, like. Oh, well, I'm different now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more, like, well, actually, like, I've I've been performing since I was a kid. Like talent shows, like performing in church, the choir, like dance teams, and like step shows and stuff like that. I've been like, that's when I knew I was meant to be in entertainment because every time I get in front of people, like excitement, like you know, I'm just going at it. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. nothing else matters. It's it's about me, you know. Yeah. So, um, I've never had an issue with you know. Not wanting to perform. I always want to perform, you know. Like, I love the attention. And, you know, of course, nerves, you know, get the best of you. But once I'm up there, it's like, yeah. just tunnel vision, focus mm-hmm. on, you know, mm-hmm. something out there and, like, just go at it. It's fun. Mm-hmm. I love performing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, Follow up to my last question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you say Miguel is like one of your inspirations, or do you feel like it's really just your life that inspires you to write and make music? Well, yeah. Um, part of Miguel has um, some influence into my music, uh, especially my sound. Because okay. when I first started out um, doing my music, I was trying so hard to replicate his sound <laughs> and like it's like this is this doesn't sound like Miguel I gotta redo it this is like you know and that's how um in a point over time I was like I can't you know go off of Miguel's style because that's his style you know mm-hmm. and it took years like I'm finally at the point where I know my sound and my uh brand mm-hmm. uh but he still does have some influence into, like, my sound. Like, okay, I don't um, try to make my sound sound similar to him. It just does. <laughs> like, no. it does, it, I want to say it does. It's more like you can probably compare my sound to, to his. Yeah. Mm. It could be, like, when you're on Spotify, it's, like, similar Yeah, artists. he can or, be one of the similar yeah. artists for sure. Yeah. yeah. But he is, like, one of my top five. Inspiration is for music. Who's the other four? <laughs> you knew it was coming. I know it was coming. <laughs> I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> <You said. laughs> so we have um, Miguel, mm-hmm. Michael Jackson, okay, Prince, oh, good one. Um, Frank Ocean, oh, and Kid Cudi. Oh, I love what? Kid Cudi. That's yes. so funny. I had a dream about Kid Cudi last night. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> 
you want to hear about the dream? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what the heck? Okay. Like, come on. Well, it was really weird because he and I apparently had a thing. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> He and I apparently had a thing back in the day, and then we were gonna try again. And I was, I woke up like, why kid cutting? Out of <laughs> why kid cutting? Yeah, that's <laughs> random. Super random. Were you like listening to his music or anything that night, or like, no? What? <laughs> I, was, I was writing my negotiation email. <laughs> I fell asleep, and it was really detailed and. He was indeed wearing a crop top in my dream. <laughs> he was like, saying all these things like, you want this whole thing back? And I was like, like no. <laughs> but in why? my dream, I was like, baby. <laughs> it's like, why are you even here? <laughs> that is so random. That's it was very random. the most random dreams I've ever had. That's very random. Because I wasn't even thinking about him. I wasn't I even listening to consciously. Probably. I don't even know. I can't even. Uh, the, oh, the last song I heard by this man was Day and Night. <laughs> I can't think of anything yeah, else. Yeah, that's, that's like random because, like I said, like no one really is talking about. It. But Kit Cudi is like known, but like, yeah. It's not. Really he, about I feel like when he had came out, he was very like different yeah. and unique and very stylish. Mm-hmm. And I remember when he came out with like the crop top. Mm-hmm. I loved it. I was for it. There was like mm-hmm. a debate, sort of a split between people being like, ew, and <laughs> other people being like, you did that. And he did indeed he did. do that. <laughs> <laughs> he did. No, Kid Cudi got me through high school. Like, No, I was like a weird little kid. So, you know, he's weird. So, you know, it was a perfect blend. <laughs> I started listening to his and I was like, mm hmm. I like that. <laughs> now, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, yeah. No, uh, that's my top five people. Yeah. So mental health is something that's super important to you. How do you feel like that has played a role in your artistry? Um, a lot. Uh, so I'm just not getting back from taking a long break from doing, uh, getting back into doing music from mm-hmm. taking a break. And, um, yeah, since 2018, this is my last, like, release. Oh, wow. And, yeah, since 2018, I've been through a lot. Okay. I mean, that's five years. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> I've been through a lot. I'm going through something. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe not negative, but <laughs> I will hope you be doing something. That's five years. <laughs> no, like, 2018, I went through, like, a really, like, bad breakup. Mm. And that, like. Because that that guy like had a huge influence on my, uh, me pushing myself to doing my music and my creativity, and like once I lost that, like everything just went downhill. Like my mental health and stuff, and then life on top of that just started happening, and so like, you know, I wasn't really focused on music for real. It's like more focused on trying to get my life together. You know, um, and I guess I was more focused on trying to find love (laughs) or trying to, like, get over him, I guess. But, um, no, like, I went through, like, bad breakups. I went through, like, abusive relationship. Uh, My brother, like, recently passed away last year. Uh, That actually, like, that kind of gave me the push to, you know, get, pull myself back up into doing music again um, because, like I said earlier, he's the reason I got into music in the mm-hmm. first place. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's one, That's the one thing that we had, like, we will always talk about, like, music and, you know, stuff like that. And I will always, like, send, like, uh, I used to always send my music to him and my dad for him to review and stuff like that. And, yeah, like, before he passed, like, I ran... The idea of my debut album, which won't be out anytime soon, <laughs> which it was supposed to be out this year, but yeah, life, life happens. happens. But um, but I'm glad I didn't because I didn't want to rush it. Mm-hmm. I this project is gonna be like perfect. 
uh, the songs are amazing. Like everything is complete. I just need to. I have to record a few songs and stuff like that. But and have it like you know, edit, mix and master and all that. But uh, yeah, he. Um, I ran the idea of the album and like gave him, told him the title and like why the title and stuff like that. And like he approved it. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. And that's like one of the things that like I um, was like. You know, I have to, this project has to, you know, be completed for him. Uh, but also my single, uh, my upcoming single, I'm releasing on his birthday. Uh, so, yeah, I'll be dedicating this to him, this release to him, <laughs> me getting back into my music. But, yeah, mental health is, is huge for me because uh, if I'm not in a good place, I know that. I, my creativity will not be there, mm-hmm. you know, so making sure I'm, I'm good mentally is my number one priority, mm-hmm. and, you know, life, like I said, life happens, and of course, I've been dealing with life the past few weeks, like, some unexpected stuff I have to deal with, I'm like, okay, you know, I had my moments, like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I going to do, but, you know, uh, I'm glad that I have the uh, mental strength to be able to pull myself back up and be like, okay, bitch, get your ass back out there. You got shit to do. You got goals to accomplish. You got, you know, you can figure it out. You've been through so much worse than it. It's like, you know, you you can do this. And, you know, having that support system as well, like my boyfriend and my family, my dad, I called him, was like telling him what was going on. He's like... You could, man. you know, like he, he's just reassuring you, like you, you're gonna figure it out because you always do. And I was like, you're right, <laughs> you're right. Uh, but yeah, like I value my mental health, yeah. and it, it helps a lot that I'm good mentally when I'm doing my music. If there was something like a piece of advice that you could give to your younger self either about music or just life in general, what would it be? Keep going. Don't give up. Because <laughs> you're going to be where you want to be. Like, I'm like, currently working in the music industry now. And you can you can talk to all the people back at home, like, in high school, like, just growing up, always been like, I want to be in the music industry. Like, I'm going to be in the music industry. And I look, I'm like, Look at me now. Like, even though I'm at the lower level, I'm not, like, quite where I want to be. Mm-hmm. I'm still in the right space. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would, I would for sure tell my younger self, keep going. Like, you know, you're gonna, it's going to be a wild journey, but, you know, it, you're eventually going to get there. I have to tell myself that now. Even, I tell myself <laughs> that now. <laughs> like, keep going. <laughs> but, yeah. The I'm journey like, doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Yeah. So. Well, you're going to be performing for us, Mm -hmm. My Beautiful Angel. I'm super excited to hear it. Um, Did you want to say anything about the song before we take a listen? Of course. Um, So I wrote My Beautiful Angel, I think last year. Um, At the time, I was dating this guy. um, And at the same time, I was kind of like, figuring out myself and because none of my past relationships ever worked because you know that's why reflection past <laughs> right <laughs> past, past relationships but over time as I got mature and start realizing hey like all the the lessons that uh, my past relationships taught me about myself and the things that I used to do uh, just getting in the relationship getting in with him like kind of felt, even though, you know, it didn't go anywhere that long, but in the beginning, like, I was like, okay, I even though if this doesn't work, I feel like I can, like, you know, for sure fall in love again. Because 2018, bad breakup, but, like, you know, mm-hmm. I gave up on love for a minute, you know? It's like, <laughs> finally, I feel like I can, like, get back into love and, like, do it mm-hmm. the right way. And that's what my beautiful angel is about, you know. The chorus is, I'm a, uh, you make me a dreamer, and I finally feel like I can love again. You know, uh, That's what he made me feel like during the time. Um, mm-hmm. But 
Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> he went in my AMV. Like, he, like... Oh, he did it. Yeah, God, like... He, like, gosh. ghosted you? He didn't ghost me, but, like, his communication was terrible. Like, I would text him, and I wouldn't hear from him probably, like, for four to six hours. And oh. I was like, I really thought he was going to say days. days. Uh, I thought he was going to uh, say uh, days. Even, like, sometimes I probably wouldn't hear from him for, like, a day or something. But I was like, bro, like, you know what? After that, I was like, I'm over this. <laughs> and I was like, this song does, is not yours anymore. Four to six hours? Four to six hours? Sometimes I'll say four to six hours. Okay. That's fun. I'm like, what are you doing? What? Like, most of the day, I wouldn't hear from him. We will probably, like, text. What is your sign? I was going to ask you that earlier. Aquarius. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I'm a Sagittarius to say Aquariuses, like, um, are compatible. But I've never met an Aquarius that's been like, you need to respond. Right yeah, because I mean, was this, and that's know, another lesson that I <laughs> learned though is patience with you know because I have to learn we we're adults we all have our own yeah thing, so yeah that taught me that lesson okay. <laughs> so here I am a lot a lot more patient okay. but you we know self awareness I was like only eight hours <laughs> exactly <now>. exactly <laughs> only eight hours <laughs> but yeah I stripped that. That song does, is not his anymore. It's my current boyfriend. You know, he's my beautiful angel. You know, oh, <laughs> I like that. that's my beautiful angel. Uh, but yeah, that's what the song is about. For sure, it's like this relationship. I for sure like this is the one. Like I that feeling. Like twenty eighteen, my twenty eighteen relationship was the first time I ever felt real love, and I feel that that same. I from that time, I was like, I won't know the one until I feel it's that it feels like what the 2018 did and this feels like that and I'm like wow <laughs> it just feels so natural <laughs> like nothing is um you know it doesn't feel like we're trying hard to figure each other out it literally feels like he's been my best friend since like probably like high school or something so yeah that's my beautiful angel. Aww. Hey, babe. Hey, baby. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's hop on over there and take a listen. Let's go. <laughs> yeah.
shines Oh, it starts when you smile You give me butterflies And it's all I haven't felt like this in a while Can't stop staring into your pretty brown eyes But I remember these Bending in my dreams Keep you next to me My beautiful angel Yo, that was so good oh So gosh. beautiful I feel it. I loved it. I loved it. Thank you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. I'm so excited to, you know, put this out. You know, everyone, like I said, it's been five years since I put out uh, music. So, you know. We're ready for you. Hey, it's it's my time. I'm back, bitches. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> I am angel. back, you know. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. You ready? It's on. It's up here from here. Up here, yes. 100%. <laughs> well, we want to connect with you. We want our listeners to be able to connect with you. So let us tell us where to find you. Uh, so you can find me on um, Instagram, uh, Sam Scott V I I. That's the number seven uh, Roman numeral and seven. Mm-hmm. So V I I. Sam Scott V I I. I'll say that again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can. Just to clarify. <laughs> yeah, just to clarify. But yeah, you can find me on on Instagram and yeah, follow my journey. Mm-hmm. You know. Most definitely. Appeal from here. Yay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on to the show today. We really appreciate you coming on and talking to us and being so vulnerable with us. Of course. Um, sharing a little bit about your world with us. Of course. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And to our listeners, thank you so much for listening. If you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, share it with your friends and family, and of course, check out Sam and be on the lookout for his new music. I'm so excited to hear my beautiful angel. I'm going to be bumping in the car. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Until next time, thanks for taking a peek into our universe. Keep seeking out the stories behind the music. Because the magic doesn't only happen on stage, but also behind the lines. Thanks, guys. Bye.